often students think that six mark questions, you're just gonna have to rote learn the whole thing. Go practice six mark questions. I think that advice is, there's a lot of text that you need to learn. One of the best ways you can learn that more effectively is, I'm going to talk to you about how to get grade nine in bio. I scored 100% in my GCSE biology exam, yet I hated it with a passion. So much so that typically Asian parents being Asian, I wanted me to do medicine and I absolutely did not want to do medicine. I didn't choose biology as my A-level choice. How do I master biology when I hate it with such passion? And that's what I'm going to try and break down for you in this video. If, if you're new here, I'm Usman and I studied engineering at University of Oxford and at University of Birmingham. Now I try to make these useful videos for you guys to help you improve in your education. The main thing with bio is that it's a lot of memorization like a lot of memorization. In comparison to the other two sciences, chemistry and physics is just a chunk load of memorization. One of the easy traps to fall into is to start rereading stuff and highlighting stuff. That is one of the most ineffective things that you guys can do if you are trying to learn biology. What you wanna do is you wanna start with papers, of course, and you wanna work your way through that. Purchase the grade seven to nine workbooks uh, for Collins, uh, grade eight to nine CGP workbooks. And I've mentioned this in my other videos. You can check out some of my other videos here. Once you've done that uh, and you need to learn your mistakes, the way you're gonna do it is either through rote learning or through flashcards. Rote learning is a very old and effective way that I personally am a big champion of. I think it's way better than most techniques that a lot of students use like blurting and rereading notes and all of this palaver. I think rote learning or rakta as it's known in Urdu is an absolute beast of a technique. I've made a video of that over here and you can go and check that out. The other thing you could do is flashcards. Something that you guys should be aware of is chunking. Biology is a lot of memorization. That means there's a lot of text that you need to learn. One of the best ways you can learn that more effectively is start to chunk the work that you're doing and organize it in a hierarchy. If you are categorizing your work, you're more likely to remember it. There's plenty of scientific studies about that. Likewise, in your short-term memory, you can only remember three to five items. So it's better to chunk them into smaller sections. So instead of learning 20 lists of, I don't know, diseases, break them down into subsections. Maybe it's disease type A, disease type B, disease type C, and disease type D, right? And each of them have five diseases in them rather than learning 20 in one go. The six mark questions, often students think that six mark questions, you just gonna have to rote learn the whole thing, or you're just gonna have to go practice six mark questions. I think that advice is bakwas. And what you need to do is you need to go and look at the subtopics in those six mark questions and make sure you understand them. And then in the six mark question, you can link them together. Practicals are about 20% of your exam paper. It is well worth memorizing them and you need to memorize them in a certain format. And the format goes like this. Number one, objective. Number two, you need to know all the apparatus or equipment. Number three, you need to know the errors. And the way I like to do it is I like to write the errors and the mitigations next to them. So you've got the errors and the mitigations in a table form. Error, error number one associated with this mitigation that goes with it. Error number two and you know mitigation number two. Similarly, you wanna do hazards or risks and safety in another column. Students learn them separately and I don't think that's useful because you can't then connect the recommended safety measure for uh, a particular hazard. If there's variations in an experiment, learn the different variations. And, uh, and sometimes you may need to know some theory, some analysis, or a particular graph needs to be drawn afterwards. What's important is you don't need to know the actual results. You just need to know the rough theory about it. That is the format that you need to know for each practical. I find it quite boring. It's the most boring part of science for me, the actual practicals in terms of for exam preparation, but it's very important. You can literally memorize 20% of the paper beforehand. And you do that by learning the practical. That's it. One final point about practicals though, is I would recommend you watch the actual video of the practicals. I know a lot of you guys have been through the COVID uh, pandemic period and you may not have done the practical. It's really important that you visualize it by seeing the actual practical. I'm not telling you to go on YouTube and look at the format of the practical for the exam. No, I've told you that and you can work that out. Now, I'm talking about the actual video that you can watch. You have a picture playing in your head when you're thinking about the practical. Another section which all exam boards have is a section called working scientifically. It's very important that you do learn these parts. So there's stuff like uncertainty, there's stuff like repeatability and so on and so forth. So you read through this and you just learn the key points. It's just another chapter that you need to know. And this applies to all three sciences. You need some one-to-one -one mentoring. 
or advice. Okay, this doesn't mean you need a tutor. Nowadays, most students, if you're at a grammar school or a private school, have a tutor. But that's not what I'm plugging here. What I'm saying to you is you need to speak to someone, okay? That could be a school teacher, that could be a tutor, that could be someone in the years above who's been through what you've been through and really gain some feedback on a one-to-one -one level on these specific topics. Mark schemes are so important in biology that you need to learn the specific wording for your answers because you may know the science behind the question. You may know it better than anyone else, but if you don't use the technical wording that they want you to use, then unfortunately you ain't going to be getting in a star or grade nine. Ultimately, it comes down to pattern recognition. How, how many variations of questions can there be out there? Humans have two eyes and one nose and one mouth, two hands. It's not suddenly they're going to say, oh, this person's got five eyes or something. Then tell us about the anatomy of five eyes. Well, you're gonna learn the anatomy of an eye and it's gonna be the same all the time. There's a limited number of topics that they can ask you on. So if you do enough papers, expose yourself to these patterns and recognize them and smash them in the exam. So good luck. Oh, and make sure to watch our video on memorization.